propagating to Facebook, propagating what? to YouTube. We should be live on both. Hello, hello, hello. I am Tara from livingonadime.com. Woo! Your place for frugal tips and recipes to help you save money on your grocery bill with quick and easy recipes that your family will love. I just did that off the top of my head. Wow. Are you impressed? I am. <laughs> All right, guys. I am the author of the Dining on a Dime Cookbooks, Volume 1 and Volume 2. They go together as a set, but they are two completely different books with all different recipes in both books. It's like an encyclopedia. They go together. But you don't have to buy them together. They just are Volume 1 and Volume 2. Today we are working out of both of my cookbooks. Also, just a little public service announcement. I only have 20, only have 20 of my 2021 Get It Together People planners left for next year, and I am not printing anymore. There is the to-do page right there for you to look at. We have a section for daily things that you can get done, like make your bed, do the dishes, do the laundry, your water. We have your top three things to get done for the day, and then your appointments and notes. So, I only have 20 of these left. I only have 20 if you are wanting one. All right, now, are we ready to go? I think so. Okay, so today we are starting in Dining on a Dime, Volume 1. Now, for those of you that don't know, okay, here's Volume 1 right here. We have a section in here called Pretty for Pennies, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is our bath and beauty section, and we are making a couple of recipes out of here to help you have some Christmas gifts. Oh, here's my special oh, elf the dad. the love has arrived. I love <laughs> our elves, dad. <laughs> Can you steal some brown sugar? Yes, you may. It's Christmas. Why not? Yay. All right. So some of the things we have. Milk baths, scented bubbles, bath gels, bath sachets, bath salts, bath bombs, oatmeal scrub, perfumed bath and body oils, massage cream and oils, facials, herbal baths, foot massage, hot oil treatment, leg wax. For those of you brave enough to wax your legs, I am not one of those people. <laughs> and then we have after bath no, splash. So I'm glad you're not one of those people. <laughs> Thank you, dear, for not being one of those people. I appreciate it. Solid perfume. And then we get to page 530 right here. Our lotion bars and our lip balm. Now, these two are super super easy to make and it's not rocket science at all now in the description i have all of these things that i'm using okay but you don't have to buy these things specifically so for the lotion bar we're going to need that first oh shoot i forgot one thing on the lotion bar but that's okay now you're going to need a silicone mold now I have this little tiny one right here, or if you want a lotion bar size a little bit bigger, I have this one that I got. You can also use specialty silicone molds. So like I have this one that's a gun, Mike will put that in there. You could make a little Wait. gun, what am I doing? putting the gun mold in there. Oh, sorry, I'm getting my computer back on. Okay. <laughs> the gun mold is where? I sent the links earlier. Right. Okay. Sorry. Here's what the gun mold looks like. So if you have a hunter in your family or anybody who loves gun and appreciates their Second Amendment rights, you can get little molds like this and you could make them a little just as a fun kind of almost practical joke kind of gift, but you could make your lotion bars out of this. You could use 
little ice cube trays that are flowers or Christmas trees or snowmen, whatever mold you want. Now, these kinds of molds I find every single time I go to the thrift store. So look at your thrift store first. Well, the specialty gun mold, I don't, this I had to get off Amazon. But Mike's putting the links in there for you, but you can set? use any silicone mold, the gun mold. Okay. Any silicone mold you want. Just make sure it's floppy like this, okay? Then you're gonna need beeswax. Now, if, let's say you don't wanna buy beeswax, but let's say you happen to have a beeswax candle. You could melt the beeswax candle down and use that, okay? So the recipe is in the description below. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your beeswax, if it is in a solid bar, then what you're gonna do is shave it into little pieces so that it's easier to melt, okay? Then you're going to add your oils. Now, whoa, sorry about that. Now, you can use one oil or a combination of oils. You can use olive oil. You can use avocado oil. I prefer avocado oil. You can use sunflower oil, shea butter, almond oil, jojoba oil, cocoa butter, castor oil, and you can't, oops, oh dear, wrong one. You can use coconut oil, but coconut oil can be very drying to the skin. So you don't, be careful with coconut oil, yes. Besides the gun one, was there something else I was supposed to? Um, the hand? beeswax um, pellets for them so they can know where to get those. Got it. Okay, then all you do is melt this. Now you can do it on the stove top if you want. Just stir it and watch it carefully. But, of course, here at Living on a Dime, we have quick and easy recipes. So, I just throw it in the microwave. Now, you will notice that the lotion bar on page 530, Dining on a Dime, right here. The lotion bar, the perfumed lotion, or no, the, the solid perfume right here, lotion bar, solid perfume and lip balms they're all basically the same recipe seriously i know can you believe it so here's what you do if you're making the lip balm take an old lip balm container if this is for yourself if it's for a gift you might want to get new ones mike's going to put the link for the lip balm container i just take off the label if it's an old one then if there's a little bit left in the bottom right there then what i do is i take a toothpick and i just go around whoops oh dear and i get all the extra out and put that on your hands for a nice little moisturizer dave can you hand me the little thing that popped out it's right there behind your computer and just rub it on your hands and now you've got nice moisturizer okay now if you're doing this for other people of course use a new lip balm tube they're not that expensive might put it in there, okay? So you take your lip balm, bring it all the way back down. Now, if you are making a lotion bar, you wanna put it in your silicone mold, or you can use these tubes and you can have a lotion bar. Also, if you have quilters or knitters or anybody like that, get these little tubes put it in there make a pretty little label you know something like that but smaller and just call it a travel lotion bar and then they can put it in with their knitting or crocheting or quilting stuff okay so yes it's dark enough you might be able to see here okay then if you are scenting your lotion bar, you can use essential oil or body safe fragrance oil. Now, you can't just put um, any kind of fragrance in here. You have to make sure that it is 
body safe. Now, if you are using, if you're making a perfume, if you're making a perfume, um, solid perfume, then just put 20 drops of perfume in. And then all you do, this isn't rocket science. Okay, you ready, Dave? Oh. Then all you do to fill up your little tube is you just pour it in, just like so. There you go. Let it harden and put your label on if you want. And you've got your lip balm. If you want your solid lotion, just fill up your lotion container. I'm not doing the whole way just so you can see it there. Let that set up. Put it in there. Now, if you are doing a solid bar type thing like this. Now I'm just going to slip. See how those just slip out? Super nice, okay? But what you do is you just take and fill your silicone mold just like so. Oops, I just have a tiny bit left. And you put it in like that. Then just let it harden and you will have a solid lotion bar okay whoops i still don't have enough let me get this turned down here okay there we go now i know i've got enough Ooh, barely okay there you go now when this settles you'll have a little indentation in the center it just always does that if that disturbs you because it will disturb some people just mix up a little tiny bit more or leave a little bit left over and then after it hardens you can fill it in and smooth off the top okay then let me show you then you just set these to the side now this is easiest on a tray but i don't have room to set a tray then just set this to the side and let it harden okay all right now let me show you real quick on this one so see on this one how when I went to move it it kind of spilled just a little bit do not panic this is not a panic moment all you do is take all the little crumbles and take a knife and just go around the edge and just smooth off the edge just like so now, save all these little crumbles if you make a lot of them because, so just save them, because what you can do is then later save all of these, just pour the leftover in a, in a mold, and then next time you go to make it, you can just pop that leftover in there. Now, how do you use these? You can put them in a tin or put them in a little, um, little baggie. But you just put it on your hand, and the heat of your hand just melts the oils and the beeswax. And then you have a glorious, nice little lotion bar. Love, love, love it. This is something that I actually use every single day. I do use this one and the lip balm every single day. Okay? All right, next. Any questions on the lip balm and the lotion bars? I haven't gotten that far, so. Okay. <laughs> far. All right, so that's in Dining on a Dime, Volume 1, if you're interested. I just love my golden gun molds. I think it's the cutest thing ever. This is what I make my gun soap toppers out of. All right. For those of you who missed it, the next thing we are making. Oh, <clears throat> Becky said just melt in a regular pan on the stove. Yep, you can if you want. You can do it however you want. Uh, the next thing we are making is the salt scrubs. Now, I don't... Oh, one other thing. We also have a recipe on page 537 in Dining Volume 1 for salve. It is the same recipe. But what you want to do, 
If you want to make a healing salve, and this is my Neosporin, this is my homemade Neosporin. If you want to make a healing salve, take some calendula, some dried calendula, put it just in a container like this, fill it to the top with the oil of your choice, olive oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil, whatever you want, and let it sit for a month or let it simmer for several hours in um, <clears throat> some boiling water. Just let it simmer real slow and let it heat up or put it in the crock pot. Then take that oil and you can have a healing salve. I love it. That is what I use in place of Neosporin. I am allergic to Neosporin. And so that is what I use for my salve, okay? You can also use comfrey leaves also. Next, we are going to make the sugar scrub. Now, I don't, apparently I forgot to mark which page that's on. I don't know which page that's on, but. If, if you're missing any of the links, I put them in the show notes, livingonadime.com, click show notes. Yep, these are all in the description also. So what you're gonna do for your sugar scrub is you're gonna take some sugar, just regular white sugar, and you're going to add your oil, okay? And then, if you want, you can add your essential oil or body safe fragrance oil. And then all you do is just stir it up just like this and get it all mixed up and it's gonna be it's gonna be thick you want it to be thicker than thinner you want it to be more sugary than than oily okay so it looks boop, doop, doop. that's what it looks like right there okay then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get you a little jar like this or like this Mike will put the link in there and then you're just going to scoop it in your jars. Oops, I forgot my ribbon to show how to decorate it. Oh well, you guys can get the point. Just put this in your jar, just like so. There you go. You can make a cute little label like this and put it on the front. You can wrap a ribbon around it if you want. That's perfectly fine. Now, this is my dead sea salt scrub. Same exact thing, except you're using dead sea salts instead of sugar. Dead now, huh? From the dead sea, not yes, dead sea. it's from the dead sea. Very healing. Nice. Now, the only thing is, for the salt scrub, if you have cuts on your hand, this will burn. The sugar does not burn as much, but this is very healing also. So even when I have a cut, it helps disinfect those cuts. And so I just rub it on there and just suck it up. And um, it helps keep the infection down, okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna make. I did have a question. Yes. Uh, one thing back. The How long does it take the lip balm to set up? Helter Skelter was asking. Well, it's already set up, so it's been five minutes. And you can see right there how mm -hmm. the center kind of indents. It just uh, does that with the oil beeswax. It does it with candles too. It's just the wax that does it, okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna make is our curry rice. Now, this is on page 457, this is in our gifts in a jar section. 457, where did you go? Okay, right there. So here is, right here. Gifts in a jar, right there. Okay, mm -hmm. we have a whole section, gifts in a jar. And page 457, right there, is our curried rice. This is just so easy, it's almost crazy. But all you do is just take one cup of rice, okay? Now, 
What I would do is do two. Oh, oh, what I would do is do two in here. I should have gotten this short squatty jar, but I didn't have one. So, but you guys can get the idea, okay? We'll just make a double batch just for those of you who will be disturbed if the container isn't full. Because <laughs> no, we, you should leave it just like. Because we know that happens, happens, don't we? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your curry. Now, you can mix all of this up together or you can layer it however you want. But let's just go ahead and we'll just mix it up together here. Oh, Deborah super chatted $5. Thank you, Deborah. Aww. She said, I love the show. Thanks so much. Okay, so there's the curry. Here's the onion powder. And then if you want the raisins, you can mix it in. But what I would do is I would just mix this all together, just like so. See, just like that. And then just sprinkle it on top. Okay, and then shake it till it has a nice little thing, a layer there. Then, if you want to do the raisins, you can. In the in the book, it doesn't have the raisins, but some people like to add those, so it's up to you. And you put that on there. And then your bouillon cube, just take a bouillon cube, smash it, just like so. Guess I should have done that on the cutting board. Sprinkle that on top. Of course, we would need two if we're doing a double batch. There you go. Take your lid. Isn't that pretty? Then just put a little ribbon around the top with some decorations, that kind of thing, if you want. That's okay? the curried rice mix, right? That's the curried <laughs> rice. Oh, Marie just super chatted $10. Says, enjoy watching you uh -huh. live. Yay, you thank guys, you, Marie. guys, thanks so much. It's thank you, be thank good you. Good to have you here. <laughs> okay, now the next thing we're going to make is the homemade talkie. Now, if I were on a deserted island and I only had two things I could eat, for me it would be toffee and peanut brittle. Absolutely love it. <laughs> if that's all I could eat for the rest of my life, I would. I love toffee and I love peanut brittle. So, here's what you're going to do. <clears throat> this recipe is in Dining on a Dime, Volume 1, right here. And we are on page 340. You can see my grandma's recipe card there. Right there. The recipe's in the link below. Dad, check YouTube. Okay. And then, what you're going to do is you are going to melt your butter now this recipe you have to be sure that you watch watch it you have to be sure you watch it every year <laughs> never fails i always burn a thing of toffee because i'm not watching it <laughs> You have to watch it. And if you do that, actually, it's funny because our, it's just walking away from it because our daughter was saying the same thing and I've had the same problem. So it's mostly just losing your attention yeah. on what you're doing. So as your butter is melting, you need to get your eight by eight inch pan sprayed. The recipe's in the description below, guys, or Dining on a Dime, volume one. Spray. Spray your pan really, really well. If you're using nuts, put your nuts on the bottom. You can use pecans, walnuts. Almonds would be like an almond roca. Super yummy. Now, I would normally do chopped nuts. I probably should have done chopped nuts. Let's see. Can I chop the nuts while they're in there? I don't know. Let's see. Can we chop the nuts? Oh, yeah, we can. There. Okay. Normally, I have a little nut chopper, and I just forgot to chop them. But what else is new? Okay, now my butter is melting, and then I'm going to get ready to put in my three quarters cup of brown sugar. 
Okay, now my neighbors won't have huge hunks of this. All right, three quarters a cup of sugar. Yeah, so let me rinse out my measuring cup here. <clears throat> a lot of people loving the gift ideas. Thanks, guys. All right, now I'm turning my heat down so my butter doesn't burn. I had a piece of frozen butter in there. And um, I, what? Don't want it to burn. Okay. Now, putting in my three quarters cup of brown sugar. Now, for brown sugar, you always want it to be packed. Okay. There we go. I had just the right amount. How did I manage that? So, here, my spoon. All right. So, I'm letting this. Can they see this, Dave? Well, they can't see the side of it. If at I all. come this way? No, I still can't. Okay, so I'll just have to stir and kind of show you. So now my butter is almost all melted. I'm going to add my brown sugar. Now, normally you need to cook this seven minutes at regular altitude, but I am at high altitude, so it takes me about eight and a half to nine minutes for it to stir but guys this is super super easy now there are people who put saltine crackers on the bottom and then put this same concoction on top that honestly for years and years and years i'm like why in the world would you do that this seems like a waste of good toffee but i have come to realize i think what it is is it's similar to salted caramel so because you have the uh, salt with the sweet caramel, it's kind of like a sweet and savory type thing. I guess that's what they're doing with that. I don't know. But I never do it that way. But what I was going to say was if you don't want to do the saltines, you can just sprinkle coarse kosher salt, um, coarse or co kosher salt on top if you want it, okay? All right, so you're going to stir this. And it's going to start to bubble and it's going to start cooking. Now, get all your sugars mixed in and you're going to start letting it cook until it gets golden brown. Now, I would not walk away from it. If, if you notice within one second it smells like it's burning, don't panic. Just take it off and pour it in your pan right away. If you, if you smell even the hint of burnage, then just take it off right away. And most of the time, if I catch it right as it's just starting to burn, then I can save it. Of course, you don't want to burn at all, but if that happens, then you can catch it, okay? So <clears throat> there's a question about the toffee. Mm -hmm. I love your toffee, made it three times. Only the first time did it turn out was soft the other two times. Did I overcook it? You undercooked it. So if you're at high altitude, the recipe says seven minutes. But if you're at high altitude like us, or it's a really high humidity day, let's say it's snowing or raining, that can make it not set up also. So you want to cook it for about 30 seconds to a minute longer. I would still eat it. If mine turns out soft, we just break it up and eat it anyway. I like it that way, but yeah, you can. Okay, any other questions? <clears throat> well, we had a couple questions from other recipes. Where did you get, where do you order the Dead Sea salt from? Amazon. I should have got a link for that, but yeah, I get it off of Amazon. Now, I had a, a soap making business, which I'm thinking about opening up again for just a little bit to use up some supplies before we move, but I had a soap making business, so I bought the Dead Sea, sea Salt in 50 pound bags, huge 50 pound bags. You don't have to buy it in that big of quantity. You can go to Big Lots or Walmart, sometimes they have it there, so, um, and that is perfectly fine. You can use kosher salt or coarse salt or Himalayan salt, any of those as long as they're a big grind, not finely ground like table salt, but a bigger grind. You could use table salt if you want, it won't hurt anything, but it, uh, how do I say it? Um, 
it doesn't dissolve as quick when you're washing it under the water. And I'll tell you my favorite, my favorite, favorite combination for the scrubs for essential oils. And you're going to think this is crazy, but my favorite combination is spearmint and orange. Oh, it that's smells crazy. so good. It smells so good. Okay. All right. Another question. Uh, <clears throat> well, actually one person asked if we have a, a recipe for the garam masala spice to add to curry. I do not. I have no idea what that is. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> she said they still ate it even though it was soft. <laughs> okay. All right, so we are getting close here. <clears throat> we got about two more minutes. If you have any other questions, Mike, we're almost there. Darlene, yay, yay, yay on the soap, please. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. I'm going through and decluttering and cleaning out everything I can so that if we find a house, we have no hesitation in throwing stuff in boxes and getting out of here. And I went downstairs and looked at the soap room and tried not to have a heart attack. <laughs> I have a lot of soap supplies left. So I had thought about, and I, I actually have a little bit of goat milk cream left too. And I had thought about, um, oops, okay, there we go. Almost burned it. Thought about opening up the soap store to, uh, just get rid of the last of it. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour it in your pan, just like so if something went wrong. Hmm. Uh-oh. Okay. That's weird. Okay, well, we'll just go with it. So you're gonna pour it in your pan, and then you're gonna take your chocolate chips, and I like the mini chips because they, um, melt a little bit easier but take my mini chips and put them on top then i let this sit and then i just start my mini chips melt really quick then i just go and let them go now for some reason mine just separated this did this last year didn't it i don't remember what Why i did would it separate? i don't know then it's already starting to get hard once you pour it in the pan it already starts to get hard so we're going to have Dave set this outside for us and we'll oh, let it get hard because right. it's Colorado and we are hot or we're cold here. Uh, and um, then I will break it apart, hopefully, and show you what it looks like. Okay. So my and every, oh, sorry. That is, was it five or six, five easy gifts you can make at home most of the stuff you already have at home so you can do it and they are all in dining on a dime volume one and then we have some health and beauty in dining on a dime volume two we have elderberry syrup and a homemade cough syrup that is great this is not medical advice but i'm doing a video on this but the homemade cough syrup you can take as much as you want it's just honey and cinnamon and a couple other things. The link is on livingonadime.com. You can go to type in, in the search, homemade cough syrup. We have it on there. But for those people who may have come down with something or another right now, and they have a cough, this can help soothe that irritated throat so that you um, can kind of get that up under control. Now, one more little public service announcement. I only have 20, um, 20, 21 planners left. I only have 20. I'm not getting any more. Just 20, guys. So if you want a 2021 planner, you can um, go grab it right now while I still have them in stock. And then questions, my love. Whew. Uh... Let's see. Actually, there's only one question that I had from before. A lot of comments. Um, where was it? Uh, my everyday wife life was wondering, she said, I make the toffee with saltine crackers on the bottom. Is that what you're doing? No. And I have never made that. And I don't understand why people do that. The only thing I can think of is it's like a, maybe you can tell me if it's like the salted caramel maybe type thing is what I'm thinking. 
So I have never made that, but um, She's if you could make it, you could make it without the saltines and just put um, coarse salt on top if you wanted. So she says not about the salt. It makes a softer toffee. Oh, it just makes it softer. Okay. And, and apparently well, yeah. there, she's in Florida because she says here in Florida, we always have to cook differently for the humidity. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So, so food, so cookie, so candies like divinity would be really hard for you to make down there. So, all right. Um, let's see. I'm going to talk about my price book here. Get, get some questions lined up and we'll answer those before I talk about, it. but first of all, thank you, Patty. Look at this cute little card. She said, I love oh, Cardinals. Really cute. Absolutely love Cardinals. My great grandmother loved cardinals, and I think that's where I got it from. I am very saddened that we don't have cardinals in Colorado. I wish we had those. Our friends, the Wormsleys, <gasps> out of Goshen, they sent us a Hanukkah card. card. Happy Hanukkah to you guys. Nice. We love you guys so much. So awesome. We need to come visit you. And the Forest family sent us a cute little Christmas card. You guys are so great. And then this book, The Heart Between Us, <laughs> this book just showed up in our mailbox. So whoever sent me this, thank you. I have no idea who that was. There was no note or anything, but thank you. Ellie and I, mom will probably read it. So it looks like it might be an interesting book. So thank you. Uh, Samantha, link you posted, can't click on it to get books. On some devices, Facebook won't let you click while it's live. But you can go to livingonadime.com and click show notes, and the links there will work. So, okay. Um, Stacy's wondering if we're planning any giveaways for Christmas. I guess I forgot no. we did that before. I had to stop doing giveaways because nobody was claiming them. So I finally stopped. I did all these... I did a ton of giveaways last year just to be nice and probably 90% of the giveaways we did nobody claimed them. Wow. So yeah I had to stop because it just it wasn't worth the time. So Nora is asking do you recommend stainless steel or non-stick saucepans for melting for making candy? Probably steel right? I use stainless steel, but it really doesn't matter. I don't think it makes a difference, to be honest. Um, it wouldn't stick to the nonstick? Well, yeah, I mean, if you mess up and let it get, um, you know, if you let it if you let it cook too much, then, yeah, the, the, the nonstick <clears throat> would help if you messed up and you had a big mess, but I use both. And here's the thing, guys, don't freak out if you have a mess up and it gets all stuck on everything and you can't get it off. All you have to do is just fill up the sink with hot soapy water and let it just sit for a couple of hours and all that will dissolve and your pan will be as good as new. By the way, go to livingonadime.com and Dining on a Dime Volume 2 has how to clean a burned pan to save it. I am the queen of burned pans, and I guarantee I have never, ever, ever had to throw out a burned pan, and some of them were super bad. The only time I had to throw something out was when I fused the tea kettle to the electric burner that was the only time I had to throw something out. But it wasn't a pan, it was a tea kettle. <clears throat> Sandra has a question. Are you still happy with the do-it-yourself countertop? No. You know what? We didn't like them Huge bomb. at first, and we probably wouldn't recommend doing them. <clears throat> but now that we've had them for a while, I don't dislike them as much as we did. Well, hop up. Zoom in over here, Dave. Oh, my word. Well, zoom in over here. Oh, are you going to show the catastrophe? We're supposed to keep the mystique. No, we're not. We gotta tell them the truth so they don't make the same mistake. It's not that bad, Mom. Can you see this right here? Yeah. So this has completely rubbed off from us doing the dishes. And when we go to sell the house, I'm gonna have to patch it up. And there's spots all over that did it. I would not recommend the Rust-Oleum countertop stuff. Dave, can you open the back door, please? Um, I would not recommend the Rust-Oleum countertop stuff at all. I would not. And as a matter of fact, I got my $200 back from the kit. I, I emailed the company, sent them pictures, and they sent me a refund. Um, let's 
see. Roxanne, quick question about the cookbooks. I have the 20th anniversary edition. Is it the same as volume one? Yes, it is. Same recipes are in there. What oils do I use for the lotion bar? So you can use any combination you want. I like all, or like avocado oil, but you could use almond oil, avocado oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, jojoba oil, castor oil. You can add all of those in there. Do we have an easy recipe for fudge? Chris, we have Dining on a Dime Volume 2, our two ingredient fudge. Go to livingonadime.com, type in Christmas candies or fudge in the search bar. Super easy, two ingredient fudge. Love that fudge. That's the only fudge I make. Mom makes the million dollar fudge, but I make the two ingredient fudge. Love, love, love it. So Sherry, do I have a recipe for goat milk cream? No, I don't. We buy it pre-made and then we sent it ourselves, but we don't make it. Um, what does it mean when you have a blue wrench to your name? Well, first of all, welcome Cheryl. Thank you for joining us. The blue wrench means those are moderators and they delete all the nasty comments and trolls from our show when they're on there. Um, AK, my stepdaughter cringed at the smell combination when I told her I was going to put in the girl's stocking. Glad to hear it's not so bad. Orange and spearmint, guys, try it. It really smells really good. And I found a sugar scrub that my mom had had and I found it sitting on her counter and I was like, oh, this smells really good. And I went and looked in the ingredients and I was like, seriously, orange and spearmint? But <laughs> it really <clears throat> smells good. Well, actually, it's funny because I remember as a kid, it was when we when I was growing up, there's a time where it was popular to stick a straight candy cane stick into an orange. Yep. And yeah. That would be a similar flavor, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it would. <laughs> um, Kay, my first time catching you live since I found your channel a week ago. Welcome! Yay! I've watched your last, I've watched at least 15 of your videos this past week, and I love your content. Woo! Thank you. Thank you for the nice comment. I will tell you guys. I know I can be a little brusque, but you know what? I tell it like it is because some people need to have a wake up call so they can get it together and get their life together. See, like Kathy sent me, <laughs> is it, oops, is it too high there? <laughs> you gotta get it together, people. And vote for Tara 2020. Glenna said, I'm doing <laughs> Christmas without credit cards, no debt, period. Yes, Woo! that is the way to go. You go. We have never, ever, 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 ever in 26 years of marriage had credit card debt for Christmas. The only credit card debt that we have had was when Mike drove our car off a cliff and we did not have the money. We had a 0% interest, 0% interest credit card, and we took $2,500 to buy a used car off of that kept transferring the credit card for the eight months it took us to pay it off when he was earning $15 an hour and working 100 miles from home. That was the only debt we've had. Aside from when we got married, Mike had credit card debt, but in our married life, we have not had any. <laughs> Rosemary, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let me tell you guys, if you have to put on a credit card, you can't afford it. So if you have kids that you wanna buy something special for, um, you need to sell something, you need to get a second job or something, but do not put Christmas gifts on a credit card that you have to pay off later. It is not worth it. Second thing, get expectations under control. My children do not get an iPad. They do not get a cell phone. They do not get a Xbox. Not for mom and dad. One year they got a Wii as a gift for all of the kids combined that was like 150 bucks that we got on on Black Friday, but we do not go in to deep debt to buy our kids those things. They use their own money or they work like Dave got his iPad as part of his job making video games for Apple. So they work and use their own money or their work to get those things. We do not pay for those. How did Mike drive off the cliff? <laughs> 
I was driving. I was driving to work when we lived in Idaho, and I worked in Washington, two hours away. And all winter long, it was always slick out. But one particular day, it was super, super icy, and I was driving really, really slowly through a mountain canyon that was doing this. And some deer were just walked out in front of the road, and I let off the gas. It didn't break because I didn't want to cause the car to go out of control. But when I let off the gas, the car just slowly started to slide and turn and I had absolutely no control of it and the deer jumped out of the way and then the car went over the cliff and it would have been into the river except there were big rocks in the river. So yeah. And what's funny is he was leaving to drive 100 miles to work and it was snowing really bad and I remember it was 5 o'clock in the morning and I was sitting there with our new first baby and I was like, he was only a month old and I remember it was like the Holy Spirit was like, he cannot go to work today. He cannot go to work today and I'm like no we have to have the money because something had just happened I can't remember what it was and it was like he can't go to work today so after he left I just sat there while I was feeding our newborn and I was just like Lord please keep him safe I don't know what's wrong but please keep him safe I don't think this snow is a good thing well sure enough he went off the cliff but he walked away from it so, Actually, they prayers do work. Really, everyone said there's no way I should have walked away. The yeah. car was kind of bent like into a U shape sideways because it landed on a, a big giant granite boulder. Yep. Actually, so, it still I, gives me chills thinking about it because. But it was definitely for me a moment of realizing God was taking care of me there. Yes. Yeah. Everyone was like, "How did you get away from that?" Yeah. <laughs> so it was a crazy. Um, and then somebody said, how do you still sell stuff online? My stuff is not selling. So you need to take really good pictures, have a good description, but don't overprice it. So if you pay $250 for that KitchenAid mixer and you expect to get $200 out of it, don't expect it. I would do $75 or maybe $100, but keep dropping the price until it sells. You cannot sell new for retail. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can get by with it. Our son one time found compressors at <laughs> Harbor Freight and the crazy kid went and bought 10, listed them for I think 50 or $100 more and he sold them all. So <laughs> sometimes you can, but the majority of the time you cannot expect to sell used or new price. Cool. Um, Mary had asked what if we have a favorite meal on Christmas or a tradition that we like to serve for food. So, yes, we have um, our Christmas, uh, our favorite Christmas recipes at livingonadime.com. Um, I was thinking they're going to last if I say red jello salad. I was going to say, <laughs> the red jello salad is um, one of them. Our, and here is... Here is the links to the ones that we do the most right here. It's called, the post is called, if you're looking later, 10 easy Christmas party food ideas. So just type in Christmas party food and you'll find it. I'm putting the link in there right now for you. Um, those are the foods. So usually we will have barbecue. Um, we used to get barbecue when it wasn't so expensive. Now we make our own. But be careful, last year I got a corned beef brisket instead of just a beef brisket. It was awful, ruined our dinner for that a portion of it. So we make brisket or something, or ham, something like that. Then we have the red jello salad. We usually have crescent rolls in the little tubes. My kids love the little tubes. We have my brother's cheese dip. That is in volume one, David's cheese dip. My Dave loves it too. It's just two ingredients, cream cheese and old English cheese, and then use that with chips. My mom has a blue cheese dip that she absolutely loves. I think that's in volume two. Um, we usually have my brother's punch. My brother has David's favorite punch in here. It's a cranberry punch. That's It sounds, it's cranberry and orange juice, and it sounds crazy, but it's super, super yummy. It's kind of got a slightly tangy sweet taste but it's not a strong cranberry taste it's just it's really good um and then we'll have like our broccoli salads so will mom move with us when we go rachel wants to know yes we are still wanting to move we are looking for houses but in the area that we're looking at there aren't many for sale right now because it's december so we are hoping i really i really want to get moved by may 
will be 10 years in this house. It's time to move on. Tomorrow's video, for those of you who watch us regularly, is why have we moved so much? Why have we moved nine times in 15 years? And we're explaining what? that tomorrow in tomorrow's video. You weren't born through a lot of it. So you weren't born for most of it. <laughs> oh, and, and then the, the last 15 years, I was going to say, we haven't well, we moved twice. I forgot who was that asked, but somebody was asking about our brilliant technical guy, Dave. Is he our son? Yes, yes he is. Our brilliant technical guy, Dave, is our son, and we love Dave. He's the best Dave ever. Um, <laughs> and let's see. Somebody wanted to know, how do I clean my white cabinets with soap and water? I just use Dawn dish soap, get a hot rag with some Dawn dish soap, and just wipe it off. Jennifer Weber says, if you move, the dogs will miss you. I know. <laughs> Yeah, the neighbors are going to have a party when we move. <laughs> They're going to be like, finally, she's gone. No, I haven't complained to the neighbors about the dog, except for one. Hers was barking for about two hours the other day, and it had been barking continually. So finally, I just said, I don't know if there's something wrong, but your dog's been barking for two hours. So <laughs> well, anyway, that I don't complain about the dogs anymore. I have resigned to the fact that we are here for the moment room. and i'm just fervently trying to sell cookbooks so that, so that we, we can, can have enough to money out. to pay cash for the next house we may have to get a loan but yes mom is planning on trying to move either near us or on our property in her own place if possible um so that is kind of what we are looking at doing but yeah, it's uh, kind of hard. I was going to say one thing. I've noticed, I was thinking about it, when you talk about neighbors and stuff, It's there are only a few of the neighbors are very upset with us and their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> the majority of the neighbors are, we get along with just fine and everything's cool there. So yeah. <laughs> I just, I was thinking... It occurred to me that some people might think that like we don't get along with any of the neighbors. No, we actually get along with, a lot of I them. mean, we've got six in our cul-de-sac and then we have several behind us and there's one, two, three out of nine or 10 places. There's like three that four, maybe four that we don't really get along with. Um, so yeah, um, we did that. Let's see. What else do we have here? Ooh, Wendy's been credit card free for 15 years. You go, girl. That's great. Good job. Guys, we have been debt free for a year and a half now. 100% not even a house payment. And it is just, it's glorious. It's absolutely glorious. Now, our business is growing and we're outgrowing our garage for book storage. But, so we may need to pay more for a property than we have cash, so we may need to get a mortgage, which if we can keep our business going at the current rate, we would have it paid off in one to two years. But, um, that's the only reason why we wouldn't pay cash for houses if we can't find something for our books. But. I have to tell you a God moment here. This was so exciting. So you guys know our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, which is, where, here it is. Gluten-free, dairy-free, dining on a dime right here for all of you who are gluten-free. I took our regular dining on a dime cookbook, volume one, and I made all the recipes gluten-free, dairy-free for those of you who are like me. But here's the thing, today, we had anticipated our, we had anticipated this coming from the printer on Thanksgiving. And we had a delay with, we had a problem with the cover that took three weeks to fix. So we were delayed. So the books were supposed to ship now, December 20th or December 21st. <clears throat> Well, so Mike called today and he's like, yeah, I just wanted to check on the shipping. And the lady said, well, got bad news. She said, the boats are backed up at the harbor and we can't get anything off the boats. So there's going to be another delay. We can't get any of the crates off the boats. It's just stuck there. So Mike hung up and he said, 
well, she just told me there's going to be another delay. And I was like, no! <laughs> now, we never said that gluten-free, dairy-free, which is 30% off right now if you guys want one. We never said that it would be there in time for Christmas because we know delays happen. And I was like, no, I don't want it to be shipping out in January now because people have already been waiting since the 1st of November. So the lady called right away back and she said, yeah, she said, well, she said, I just wanted to tell you, the boats are really backed up. They can't get any of the cargo off. She said, and your boat is completely full except they got one shipping container off and onto the truck. And it was yours. And our books are in Utah. And we live in Colorado. So they're on the way. Ah! So, so some of you, I'm not promising anything. I am not promising anything, but you might, if you've already pre-ordered Dining on a Dime, Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free, you might get it before Christmas. No promises. No promises. Don't get your hopes up. Just in but case. if we can ship them out late next week, if the books get here late next week, then you might get them in time for Christmas. No promises, but you might, okay? Keeping so, in mind that we have been saying that you won't, so if you do, that'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheryl Ann wants to know why the boats are backed up in the harbor. I don't know. Did she say why? Is there a trucker strike or Well, she just said there's a lot of COVID? She didn't or? say the boats are backed up in the harbor. She just said that there's a, a lot of congestion right now. And I don't know what, if she means that the boats are backed up or if she just means oh, I see. like business, there's a lot of business or something. But for whatever reason, that, that particular boat has been sitting there with the other containers on it for a week yeah. <laughs> after they unloaded ours. Yeah. So it's like yeah. a blessing Nicole, that they're welcome. Coming. Nicole from Washington State. Britt, how long did it take us to become debt-free? 24 years. 24 years to be completely debt-free. Now... I will tell you, for 21 of those years, no, 20, yeah, 21 of those years, we made $50,000 or less, and like the majority of those years were or less. We're talking 30,000 or less. So like for 10 to 12 years, we made $35,000 or less, but we still remained completely credit card debt free, completely car debt free, no student loans, no credit card, no car loans, the only debt that we had. So after the first five years we were married, we got his credit card paid off and the medical bills from my daughter being born paid off and his car crash paid off. After that, after the first five years we were married, we had no debt except our house, none at all. So. We've only had our house payment for the last 20 years, and it took us 15 <clears throat> years to get, no, 15, six. So it took us 21 years to get everything, including our house paid off. And finally, we got to making more than $50,000 a year. So we took every single penny and put it on our house and paid it off. But here's the thing, even those years when we were making 30 to $35,000 a year or less, I mean, a lot of years we made 15, $20,000. Every year we put something to pay off our house. Mike always added, even if it was five or $10 to the principal, we always added something extra just to keep a forward momentum going. Yeah, there, so, there was a time where we really didn't think we could afford it, and I was just thinking, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put a little extra on it because it seems like we're always able to make up a little shortfall yeah. if we have one. Yeah. And by doing that more and more, we started to not miss the money we were putting to pay off debt. Yep. So. And every time we would get something extra, we would put it on the house. So something expected, um, that kind of thing. We... Uh, we would put it on our house to pay it off because we always made sure we had an emergency fund then after that. We started with $100 emergency, then we worked up to 500, then we worked up to 1000, and then we worked up to 5000, but once we got to 1000, we made sure we never went below 1000 and if we had to, if a car broke down and we had to buy a car or something, we would 
rebuild that fund right back up as fast as we could. So we would um, make sure that we got that done. Hello in Idaho, it just scrolled off. I don't know who who um, said hello from Idaho. Oh, I don't know. Oh, gracious, 48, yes. All right, I'm gonna do one thing real quick here. Everybody keeps asking about the price book, how to use it, so I'm gonna show you real quick. Here's our price book, guys, and it has an explanation right here. It has an explanation on how to do it. This is the number one way to save money on your grocery bill, is our price book, the number one way. You can make this at home, it's fine. I just made it because my viewers were asking for it, but here's what you do. We have already pre-filled a lot of the foods that you normally get, but here are the foods, and then what you do is you fill in at the top here, right here, store number one, two, and three, your top three store names. So for me, it would be Walmart, Kroger, and Costco, I guess. I shop mostly at Walmart and Kroger, but Walmart, Kroger, and Costco if you want. I don't normally shop at Costco, but if something's a super good deal, then I'll add it in here. Here is my stock up price. So if it hits this price or lower, I stock up and make sure if butter is $1.99 a pound, I stock it up, fill my freezer with butter. So then what I do is I fill in the number right here, Walmart's price for butter, $2.37. Kroger's price for butter, $2.38. Costco's price for butter, $2.99. Then when there's a sale and it goes lower than that, I will change it. Walmart, $2.29. Kroger, $1.99 then I know when butter goes on sale for $1.99, Kroger has the best price, and when it hits that price, I stock it up. So if I go to Walmart and I see butter's $1.79 a pound, I'll know my normal stock up price is $1.99, so then I do it. So that's how you use the price book. This is the number one way to save money on your grocery bill is to absolutely know your prices and that's exactly what yesterday's video was about on my preppers are lying to you you have to know your prices don't just take someone's word even my word don't take someone's word that something is cheaper without you finding out the facts to see if it's actually cheaper where you are and by the way if any of the preppers are watching, I did not say every single prepper does this. I said, I don't watch prepping videos, but I happened upon two prepping videos and they both said the same thing. This is cheaper if you buy it online <clears throat> at this place. Well, it's not. So I was just saying, make sure you know your prices. I have no problem with people recommending these things because that's part of their income and that's totally fine. I have no problem with that. But you as the consumer need to know if it's actually cheaper or not. Okay. Um, thank you, Pam, for ordering gluten-free, dairy-free. Appreciate it. Uh, Nicole, I would love to order a cookbook for my son. Do I have any 20th anniversary? No. Those are totally sold out and we will never have those again. However, so the volume the, one is the same yeah. recipes. It's volume just, one right here. It just doesn't have our story about how we made the book, yeah. which was a special thing. Yeah, from. that was a special edition, but now that is the same book. Does Mike cook? No, he doesn't really cook. He knows how to make an omelet. He knows how to cook chicken, like fajita type chicken, but he doesn't just cook all the time, no. I'm good at throwing together random things into usually something Mexican-like. Yeah. <laughs> So Nanny says, I just started by stock up pricing and it has helped so much. Very good. Good job. She uses the flip app. I don't use apps. I use the old fashioned because that's what I like to do because me and my phone are not one. Uh, by the way, Mike has done cook some of the stuff out of our books here. I have. Uh, and it's all turned out really great. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I was like, oh, wow, this is really good. <laughs> 
So it was like, I was a little surprised yeah. Yeah. that I turned it out so well. But I guess yeah. I followed directions pretty well. And actually, it's funny because uh, as far as the following directions, it is important if you make a recipe out of out of one of our books to make it according to the recipe the first time if you want to know for sure what it's supposed to be like because a lot of people especially with cookies will like if it calls for shortening they'll use butter and it completely changes the the consistency into something else mm -hmm. so it's not even really the same recipe at that point terry was surprised to see an article in the times news from burlington north carolina about us yes one of our articles went around the newspapers so thank you so much what's funny is that article's like 10 years old which one was it? um uh, i can't remember i think it was just an interview that they had with me about saving money, that kind of thing in general. Ooh, Elizabeth says for viewers in the South, Publix will be having hams for $1.29 a pound tomorrow. Oh, wow. wow. That's a good deal. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really helped. Um, yeah, so anyway, guys, tomorrow's... Would you stop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have converse. Dave holding the clock up. I need to converse if you guys have something. <laughs> So we were trying to decide if we should drive up to Wyoming tonight after the show to see the Northern Lights. David's wanted to see the Northern Lights, and they're going to be coming through Wyoming. They're going to be on the horizon. Oh, they're going to be on the horizon? On, in Wyoming, yeah. Oh, so we may not be able to see it? So maybe, there, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. We were a little concerned yeah. because there are a lot of deer on the road up there at night, and yeah. so we were hesitant yes. to drive at night. All right. One more thing. Jack, come here. Jack, oh, Jack, Jack. thank you, Amy. Before you go tonight, Jonathan? have a wonderful birthday, Mike. Thank you. Uh, I intend to. I keep forgetting it's even coming. <laughs> quickly. Come. Oh, I forgot that's going to be Okay. Mike's here. birthday is this weekend. Woo. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Matt. Happy birthday to you. you. Yay. Woo. Woo! All right. Have a cake. Speech, speech, speech. Oh. Okay, what's your speech? Go ahead, do just, your speech. I'm just joking. I didn't think of a speech. Do we, do we, do we have the... I'm waiting for the speech. This is your moment. You want to have a speech. Go ahead. <laughs> I want five minutes to prepare for my speech. Why? Well, thank you. <laughs> you, can have, you can have time. Paula, do I do my own nails? These are press-on nails that I got for $5, so they're $2.50 <laughs> for a wearing because I wear them. I use half of them for two weeks, and then I do the other half for two weeks, so I get a month for $5, so a dollar a week, out of my fingernails. We had a question um, about how the toffee turned out. Uh, it probably turned out, but I don't know that it's totally hard yet. It's... It's just getting cold. I can't really tell. I don't think it's hard yet. It's not quite. You really need to put it when it's cold, cold. And I think it's still like 50 or 60 degrees outside. So. Would it be worth showing it in there? Or do we need well, to wait Well, I can done? try. Hand it to me. I don't know, Dave. Sorry, not trying to pressure you. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, I am. Everybody's like, show us. Okay, one person is like, show us. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Roberta says your nails look so pretty, Tara. Oh, yeah, it's not hard yet. I need it to harden up just a little bit more. Um, sorry, guys. I thought it was colder outside than it actually is, but I will make some and show it. I'll show you on Wednesday's show. I'll make some and I'll, I'll show it on Wednesday's show. Um, all right, guys, please visit us, livingonadime.com. 25% off our books. Gluten-free, dairy-free is 30% off for pre-orders right now. Hope, we hope, sorry, to be shipping them late next week. And, oh, we can do it. And it's supposed to be 30 degrees. I was praying it would be really nice, but it I've looks like it's gonna be cold. Gonna cold. You can get one of those big industrial heaters and set it but in the actually set it in the uh, the warehouse. Could be getting cold because of the geomagnetic storm. You think so? <laughs> it really could. Because or maybe it could be at... getting cold because it's like you know December. No, I was looking at my weather app and there's a super irregular wind <laughs> pattern going on right now. 
Have um, you ever noticed how we always have... December 2, but that's not like what was predicted before all this... Have stuff. you ever yeah. noticed how we have global warming in July, but then we have global warming in December when it's 30 degrees and we have tons and tons of snow? Yeah. Thank you everyone <laughs> for the, the birthday things. I appreciate that. All right, guys. Have a good night. Tomorrow's show is Why Do We Move So Much? Darlene, I will pull your order and see if I can sign up for you. It's not a live show. Um, That's just a... Yeah. My, or I mean video. Tomorrow's video is Why Do We Move So Much? Why do we move so much? Because we're crazy? Because we're not a tree. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice reply. Livingonadime.com. Bye.